Well, we're going to get at it. Got it going on. Hey, guys, Dave Calloway, WIFC here in Wausau, Wisconsin, and uh, down in Florida is Chad Lemons. We're doing an update uh, interview here real quick about what's happening covering world record breaking water skiers. And so in doing that, Chad is doing that via a drone system. You know, we are talking about drones a lot here on all these different platforms. And so Chad, a little update. How's it been going? It's been going great. We had a couple of records that we achieved yesterday. Uh, that was when we had the interview. And then today, uh, I started really early this morning, got a couple uh, records, including potentially Guinness records. And now we're just moving from some really cool jumping records to uh, swivel ski, a huge swivel, swivel ski record. So Wow. Man, hey, well, and in, in case people missed that on our last uh, interview, I just wanted to update them really quickly is that what we're talking about is there several people who are together in Florida right now attempting to break world record and Guinness records. Those two categories are different, right? Yeah, they're national and world records. So national would be US, US national records, and then the Guinness is the world record. Got it. So when you're when you're doing that and you're trying to get coverage of this, we also have mentioned where they're wanting to do like a head count and make sure, you know, they've got uh, the uh, enough skiers to break a, a certain record. And in some yeah. cases, drone footage comes in handy for that sort of thing. Right. Yeah, they have a process down here. They, yeah, they march you through line with a ticket and you have to put your ticket in an envelope and they have to record you and show that everybody, including all of the, the, the people that are there to spot the video, the photo, photographers, the skiers, everybody goes through this line to ensure the right people are at the right place at the right time because Guinness requires it. And then the footage, yeah, absolutely. The drone and the video cameras and the photography is all to support when, the, when or if the record is break, broken. Good deal. Yeah. Now, one thing here is uh, talking about the challenges of actually trying to get this coverage. You're in a chain of links, uh, lakes that are in uh, Florida and you're droning over them whenever they're raring to go and try and break uh, a given record. Can you talk a little bit about the challenges in trying to do that? Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, think about these boat launch places or these places where people launch boats where I'm, you know, some of which I'm flying from and there's not a lot of electricity and power when I'm flying drones that have batteries in them. One of the biggest things I've had to schedule and plan for is powering recharging my batteries, recharge, make sure my mobile device is charged, and then the space on my SD cards. And they're given, you know, all of this on a picnic table under a bench with 50 other people all flying around. And then, you know, it's just, there's been, it's just a constant resource management, but been able to successfully uh, uh, manage it to date, constantly cycling batteries, making sure they didn't go too hot. It's, it's hot in Florida, Dave. You know, I've always read that. And batteries don't like hot. <laughs> As you were. Know, yeah. So you got to keep them cool and uh, keep them out of the sun. But then you got to cycle them because you got to, I got to film another one. So it's just constant cycle. But you yeah, always, it's. A, whenever you are uh, flying, Chad, I notice you know, there's uh, a lot of drone pilots. And uh, I know they're, they're trying to make sure that they're keeping an eye on the drone itself. But also, you're looking down at your monitor. And so in the conditions you've described, you're flying over water, you're flying in very hot conditions, is what kind of alerts and things are coming up on your monitor when you're, uh, you're flying your drone? Um, a lot, you know, so a lot, of the, a lot of the times I have to switch to the sport or attitude modes of the drones because the boats are going really fast. So you get a lot of those um alerts related to uh you know removal of certain safety obstacle avoidances and um i'm not really getting a lot of battery temperature uh errors or wind velocity errors around here i'm surprised because we're in central florida i would have expected there to be more winds um but no it's been very calm so really from a warnings perspective i haven't had anything to deal with i have been getting an imu update required on one of my drones uh haven't flown it in a while but so other than that, it's been it's been pretty clean. So does one battery uh, charge over the course of uh, use of one battery equal one world record attempt, or are you uh, not eating up a, a battery in the course of that amount of time? That's a good question. The runs, uh, the runs, depending on the events, like the one we were just at, the runs recycle 
it takes them, you know, four minutes to do a run. And then it takes them 15 minutes to wind the ropes. They got to wind them a certain way, just like, just like you're filling a parachute. You got to do them a certain way so that they don't knot up. So it takes 15 minute recycle period. So I bring the drone back, the battery, you know, battery cycles. I probably fly to about half or 30% battery power, pull that battery, pop on a fresh one, pop that 30% on the charger. So it constantly refreshes. And then I have two or three drones, which I might uh, rotate between. Wow. You, um, how much uh, more do you have to uh, try and get footage on? Well, today is a full day. So today we're going from seven to seven, 6.45 or so. And then tomorrow's a full day because it is the weekend. Apparently more people have off on the weekend. So they, they, they loaded a lot of the bigger events onto the weekend. So um, we're, about, we're just getting started. So what I can do, uh, Chad, because I want to show people uh, what some of this looks like. And, uh, and I think what people should pay attention to when they look at some of the footage is look where you have to be in order to get the good shot. Whenever we're covering events, I always talk to people about getting out front. There's so many people, the difference between getting pro shots and getting amateur shots is where you are. And so if you're behind a crowd, sometimes that looks fantastic. Depends on what is out there beyond you. Like if they're skiing towards a sunset or something like that, that may be incredible footage. But when you get out in front of them, this is where you get that really good pro footage. And sometimes they may you know, go right past you but they're coming at you and you're getting their facial expressions or you're getting what they look like on the front end. And I do that for, you know, triathlons, all kinds of things to make sure I'm way out front. And that takes a lot of planning. Talk about the planning a little bit to make sure you're in the right spot so that you can get good footage. Yeah. I have to think about what, what they need based on what events being done. If they, you know, a lot of them are asking for behind because they, it's just, they need all the number of skiers in the line. And it depends on the number of skiers, if I'll feel even confident going in from, but one of the bomb runs that we've done that we did today, actually the really early one we did this morning, I was in front, just like you're talking and it got the best footage of any of the events so far. Um, I definitely think the front footage is the best from a, uh, perspective of water skiing because it really does show um, perspective versus if you're in behind you get all the waves from the skis or the whatever they're you know if it's a ski or hydrofoil or barefoot and uh, you, you tend to lose the person in it so you know the, the the front shot has definitely been the the most successful but you, you still have to plan the length between the skiers and the boat because being part 107 I can't operate over anybody, so I have to be very cautious and always have in the back of my mind an escape route to ensure that I can escape from wherever I am safely without putting any people or boats or anything else at risk. You know, uh, well, and we're going to show a little bit of footage because what I'll do is I'll attach some footage to this interview so that you can see what we're talking about. Uh, but one other thing here is you're in Florida. Uh, we've talked about temperature and all that sort of thing is you're also in the land of gators and whatnot. Um, do alligators like drones? I think they do. Uh, we just did our last run when we were doing a bunch of ski jumpers, which is nuts, crazy, crazy footage. Multiple ski people. Off a platform flipping. And I saw, I heard that there were two gators in the water. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just passing information along. I mean, I think they were there because they knew I was going to be there with the drones. I, I mean, I, I'm, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Yeah, why not? You might as well. Come on, go with it. And I did find out. I confirmed, not from the mayor of Florida, but somebody told me that this place is the skiing capital of the, of the world. Yeah, we're, ru- we're running with that, Chad, no matter what. That's great. <laughs> Uh, well, hey, more updates over the weekend. You got more to tell, and I know you got more to show. Is uh, we're going to show you here what it looks like uh, down in Florida at some of this amazing, amazing world record breaking water skiing that's happening in Florida. Chad Lemons, creative right here. Dave Calloway, I know we'll catch up with you guys soon. Bye, everyone. Oh, man. How about it? There it is.